You have to make space for your desires to come into your life before they arrive, otherwise they don't fit. It's pretty simple, but this is something that we look over all the time. And so in yesterday's video, which should be uploaded by now, hopefully, I am, hi, I'm Araya. I am currently in Spain. Yesterday I was in Portugal, currently sick, but somehow feeling okay right now. Again, yesterday when I recorded, it was like <laughs> symptoms kind of cleared when I started um, doing my video because I've been doing videos every single day for almost two months now. On this channel, we talk about remembering who you are, getting what you want. Uh, I share my own life experiences of applying all the things that I've learned and that I teach on here as well. And so um, yesterday's video was a lot about visualization and committing to 30 days of one hour a day active visualization eyes open retraining that part of the brain because it's a different part of the brain also it's raining right now which is lovely but <laughs> uh, if that's too loud i apologize so when your eyes are open versus closed there's different parts of your brain engaged and oftentimes like the parts that need rewiring are the parts that are only uh, engaged when your eyes are open. And so that's why it's really, really, really so effective and important to visualize both with your eyes closed and with your eyes open. So while you're walking, while you're cleaning, while you're, you know, just engaging with your day to day, if you can bring in that frequency of the version of you that you desire to be, you know, the version of you that has the job, the career, the love, the home, the abundance, the whatever, if you can embody that frequency for as long as possible, honestly, throughout the day, then it will come to you closer be or sooner because you are, um, you're vibrating at that level. The, your body and your mind don't know the difference of if you're imagining it or if it's, um, actually real, real. <laughs> and so the thing about doing this is that it creates the space for like the capacity for this life to come in, right? So you hear about all these people who win the lottery and then they lose it all. It's because like most often they're not at that uh, vibration with where they are in enough space, where they have enough space to hold that level of abundance. And so it's the same thing for all things that we're trying to create. and. Like I've uh, talked about before, but like when I quit my job oh, seven months ago, I don't know how long ago it was, last year, and I had been trying and trying and trying to call in something new for so long. As soon as I closed the door on that job, people from all over started coming to me with opportunities and so many opportunities. I was like, wow, this never happened when I was in that position for five years. And then energetically, I closed the door and I had all this space, right? And so all these other things started coming in. And so it's the same thing, but we can do this without actually having to do anything really in the perceived reality, like quitting our job or leaving the relationship or whatever, moving, but like those will make a huge difference, but you can also make a huge significant difference by doing your visualization. And so you can make the space for the version of you with a career if you are visualizing it and you are embodying it and you like understand what it's like to be in that energy, then it will fit right into your life. But if that career comes to you and that amount of, you know, responsibility is there for you and that amount of, you know, abundance is there for you and you're like, ah, like, I don't know how to handle all this. This is scary. But um, if you had been visualizing it, you would be really familiar with it. So there's the study where it was like uh, for free throws in basketball. I'm a baller, by the way. <laughs> uh, I was a position two, so I love shooting. But anyway, this study was fascinating to me because there is so much. So yeah, this, is, this applies. So being a shooter, like my position, I would always have the process. And this is with any athlete, really. It's like you have the feeling, like you visualize it going in before it goes in. And that's how I was such a good shooter for so long because I would like, I knew that feeling. 
I would like apply it right before I started the muscle memory from the, my, the, my feet all the way up to the hand and the ball rolling off. And it was also the visualization of it going in and then it would go in, right? And so the study was, there was a group of people who uh, visualized practicing free throws for however long. And then there was a group of people who actually practiced and would do their free throws in their physical body. And I forget the results, you could probably look it up, but it was like, they were almost equal. <laughs> the actual, when they got to the competition or whatever of shooting the free throws in real life, the visualization group and the, the physical practicer group, they were almost equal in their ability to make a free throw. And so that is just how powerful visualization is. It's like, it's so important for all that we're doing. And so if you're not doing it, or if you had a practice of doing it before, I hope that this is your reminder that you can take control over your life right now. If you can start, I mean, maybe you could do it without this, but this can really assist you. So if you can start this practice of committing to it, it's probably one of the most effective things you could do for your life right now. Whatever you're trying to call in, visualize it being in your life. Feel it. What are the emotions? Feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it. <laughs> My favorite parts of like, I feel really good after. And so uh, the, the other really impor important part of visualization is it's not only like making the space and making you ready to call in everything in this like perceived reality, but it's healing your nervous system. So all these programs that are designed to heal chronic illness, like Gupta and DNRS, and there's other ones too, uh, like uh, Joe Dispenza's work, it's like we're bringing in that high vibrational feeling frequency and we're rewiring our body and our mind. It's the same thing with tapping. Like oftentimes with EFT tapping, you will tap on like uh, the bad thing, but then like you, you bring it around and then you, you tap on like something really good. So you like rewire the bad thing, the un unpleasant thing with a really high vibrational thing. And then it's rewiring in your nervous system. You can heal chronic illness. Like so many people, like one of my friends, um, she was wheelchair, like she was in a wheelchair from her condition. And the thing that worked for her because, oh, like, so many people could heal from this information. She was in a wheelchair. She couldn't do all this. Like she had Lyme disease and other things going on. She couldn't take supplements. She couldn't do treatments. Like we were both on this healing journey at the same time. And like, I just remember like feeling so bad. Like I want to take that out of my vocabulary because it's not, like, our, our words really affect our reality. But at that time I was feeling so bad because I was able to, do all these treatments and see some results and like she couldn't do anything and she was like she's such an amazing mom and everything and she's doing so much better now she's living a normal life like having whatever she wants to eat doing whatever she wants because she committed to her brain retraining program and was able to heal the body that way I had a lady one time her daughter contacted me um and she was like my mom is in this like cabin out by or in the woods or whatever. She can't have any electronics or anything in her home because like she's so sensitive to EMF. She's so sensitive to everything. Like nothing works. She can't try anything. Like I don't know what to do for her. And so I spoke with the mom. She could like hold a landline for a little bit, but ne never a cell phone. The landline still has some EMF, but not as much. And so I recommended some brain retraining program to her. I think it was the DNRS one, but she wrote me an email a few months later and she was like, I just wanted to say like you, and this isn't bragging. This is just showing the, like the benefit, like the, the ability of this work of how it can change your life. She's like, I, I'm able to live a normal life now. Like I thought my life was over. I thought I had to live out here in this home and not have any contact or communication with anybody. She couldn't even go to the grocery store because of the EMFs and because of all the chemicals, like the, the perfumes people would wear, the chemicals they would clean the store with, everything, it was too much for her. So she couldn't do anything. And now she's able to live a normal life because she was able to heal her body 
through the, the power of visualization and the frequencies that we can embody through visualization. And so you're making the space for your new life to coming in. You're healing your body by bringing in a higher vibration, right? In all ways, you are improving your life. And so, yeah, really, I mean, personally, I am committing to this because uh, I, you know, I have my, my mindful meditation 15 minutes a day. I have my communicate with my angels and guides for 15 to 30 minutes a day. And now, like, I know this, it adds up a lot of time. But if you could do an hour throughout the day, like in 30 days, you will be so different. Like you will have so much coming in for you if you can commit to this. Think about how often do you scroll on your phone a day? How often are we doing mindless things? How often are you watching a TV show and then watching the next one and watching the next one? Like keep watching the next episode and then you're up late. And so there is time in the day. <laughs> <laughs> there is time in the day that we can commit to these things. If you really want to change your life and come into alignment with what your soul wants for you, you got to wake up, <laughs> wake up and stop letting the, un the unconscious control your life. Like it's, it's so interesting to me right now because I've been looking at these things like our social media, like we've been given these phones and they just, one, f uh, Arla, let's not, let's not do that right there, okay? <sighs> Playing with the ball right under this camera situation. So one, they say one third of our day now, one third of our life is sleeping, one third of our life is on social media, on our phones, on our technology. So that's a lot of freaking time of our life. And then also like our society has, made us think that it's like fun and like just part of culture to drink alcohol all the time like I don't know your stance on it but I've just been observing it and like it just seems like another way of controlling the people because we drink we're told it's fun and like in the moment it's a lot of fun but then the next day a lot of us are having anxiety like I don't feel good like now my day is wasted now I'm not like doing my meditation I'm not doing my workout I'm not doing like the things that I really enjoy uh you know and I still feel this pressure to like still drink in the future and so it just seems like another way of going unconscious and so I bring that up because it's like where are we letting our power go and where can we regain it and so if it's a, a matter of not having enough time for an hour a day for 30 days look at the things that are taking up your time look at the things that are making you not want to do this stuff right where well, you can be so addicted to the phones to the junk food to the things that just like cloud our mind and cloud our uh, what is it? Our drive, not our drive, but our desire to do the thing that our soul wants us to do. So I just encourage you to get clear and to be strong in the process of facing what's been controlling you and saying no more, like I'm taking control of my life. And you can do that with visualization too. Like people, uh, someone I was just listening to talk about this, she had a binge eating disorder and so she would visualize herself not binge eating that day and visualize herself like making the healthy choice and visualize that and she was able to no longer have this binge eating condition some people need professional help i personally had the same thing with my life with eating disorders and whatnot and through consciously choosing i was like wait a second why am i doing this why and it's because of all this pressure that's put on us to be something that we're not and when you can start to see the truth and everything you can start to get your life back so make the space energetically within your being to call in the things that you want with your free will you get to choose exactly what you want in life you just have to let yourself have it and not believe in the unconscious that tries to tell you that you can't have it while it's arriving to you that's the message wow again i forgot that i'm sick in this whole 15 minutes that was wonderful okay i'm going to hit the road again I hope to be able to post these videos 
I have yesterday's and now today. Yesterday I had to re-record, but I wanted to record the same topic because the day before, the video deleted. <laughs> it's been all these like hiccups, but I've just been like staying focused on healing my body and getting to France. Cause right now like I'm, I have to get to France by, what's today? I, don't, I have to get to France in like two days. Arlo, can you not do that please? Thank you. Thanks, baby. Um, so what was I gonna share? Oh yeah, yesterday just funny little travel thing. So I'm driving to France, right? I'm making my road trip. I was like, oh, it'll be fun to stop in this little town. It's only three hours away since I'm sick. Like I'll just try to do a three hour drive instead of like the five hour drive to the place that's close to France. I ended up driving six hours to a place that's like much further. <laughs> So now I still have six hours to drive to France, but I was driving here and I'm going up and up and up this mountain. And I had no idea that there are mountains and snow here in this part of Spain. And so like, I looked at the satellite map, but it just doesn't really show you, I guess that there's snow and I didn't really know how to read it for mountain range either. And so when I got to the place where I was supposed to stay last night, it's like freezing at nighttime. And so the van doesn't have heat yet, but it has like insulation. I just didn't know how it would be. I was going to a place with electricity, but it was also like free electricity. So I was like, I, I can't bank on this working because <laughs> if there's no electricity and I'm sick and it's freezing cold, like it's not going to be a fun time. So I drove two more hours to this spot to this campsite. I was like, I'll go to this paid campsite by the ocean and I get here and it's closed. I was like, oh. the sun was going down. And so then I went to go find a free spot here and I saw this camper van parked here. And so I was like, I'll go to the free spot that I see on the map. If no one's there, cause I like to camp next to people. It feels a little bit safer to me. Then I'll come back here. So I just parked next to these people. They're in a nice like sprinter van type thing. They seem like a sweet couple. And so I hope I didn't scare them by just like pulling up and like jumping in the back and closing the curtain. <laughs> but yeah, so the van life stuff is, it's a learning experience. Um, I like to arrive early and find my spot within the daylight, but I, I can improve in looking at the, uh, the map to see if there's mountains and snow and that kind of stuff because being in these foreign countries I don't know the land as I would know in California like I would always know no matter where I am in California I would know if like the route's gonna take me through the mountains but I am very unfamiliar with a lot of the places here in Europe so anyway that's that experience so <laughs> I'm gonna hit the road should be all good it's on the coast today and Hi Arlo, I know you want to go play, but there's no, there's so much rain outside. I'm sorry. Come here, you want to say hi? Come here, come here, come here. Okay, here's Arlo. Yeah, thank you, baby. Look at the camera. You gotta look into the camera. Don't look at yourself. <laughs> All right, we will see you in tomorrow's video. And thank you for being here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and leave a comment if you feel called to do so. Bye.